Hey guys, um, it's Zach Tech of Six here, and with uh, Part Two, Wonders Beyond Any Percent. So, um, I'm going to try and get started. There's a lot of cutscenes and stuff to go through. Um, but um, time on the timer will start whenever I press um, play in Poke Park in three. Two, one, go. Um, but yeah, so I'm Zach the Quest 6. Um, I have the record in this game, and I'm a pretty good time in Park 1 too. Um, but I started playing this game about, I think it was like a year or two ago. I'm not sure specifically because I don't like, I'm not good with dates, but um, it's been a lot of attempts and a lot of resets and re-strategizing and rerouting for this game um and a lot of it was picking off of where um i think it's where our death line ran off of um but this route isn't one that i don't think has been done in like a marathon before or anything um because this this game we'll just go call it the cutscenes and stuff um there's a mechanic um you'll see later about portal points where you have to shake the Wii emote really hard and it's such like a physical toll or whatever that it ends up putting off a lot of people from running this game but I think um, beyond that one aspect of the game I think um, I have a speed run that I find pretty fun at least um, but yeah so you know going through all the starting cutscenes we see the world's in danger and Pikachu might be the one to save the day. Spoiler alert. Um, they're correct. Yeah. So the controls in this game are a bit, um, a bit hard because if you've played this game before, you'll know it uses a sideways weird mode as the controls, um, which means you're using a D-pad for your motion. Um, and like, there's a sort of, I don't know if I'd call it tank controls, but it's definitely not the most, um, conducive to being able to just tightly control your character perfectly every time. Um, so that can make a lot of overall movement hard and stuff, but there's a lot of, um, You know, once you once you get into it, I feel like it's better. Um, but I have um, I, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, in this game, you go and get a bunch of friends, and use them to get the portals, like the points for the portals that I mentioned before. I play skill games, so Chase is the first skill game. Chase is basically just a game of tag. So you'll start and you have to chase whatever the Pokemon is. Um, pretty quickly. There are not a ton of them in this run, but the ones that are, are a bit difficult. Not that one, that one's easy. <laughs> um, literally can't lose. Um, but I think the thing in this run that shines the most in terms of gameplay is the fighting, um, for like the battles, because the battle system in this game is a real-time sort of combat system where you're fighting different opponents. Um, and you'll see that up coming up here with Timber, um, where you have to go and, um, you know, fight him. There are a bunch of different types of attacks that you can use, so the game introduces Thunderbolt first, um, but the ranged attacks usually aren't the ones you end up using the most, because you charge them up first, and that takes some time. So usually if you're going to use them, you're going to use them you know, while you're waiting for like invincibility frames or something so that, that charge time isn't wasted. Most attacks are dash combos, so you'll see I'll use two dash combos to get Timber really quickly here. Um, and that fight has a lot of different versions of it. You can you can do a bunch of different combinations of inputs, and 
It's like sort of like buffer strategies. If you've ever heard of uh, um, Mike Tyson's Punch Out, games like that, that um, do certain inputs that don't necessarily do anything, but delay a certain amount of frames or a certain amount of inputs in a certain direction, to help set up for a um, sort of outcome you want. Um, there are a lot of that type of strategy in the fights in this game, um, which can lead to some really difficult patterns you have to sort of memorize and work with to get a good time throughout the run, because it really adds up over the course of the run. But yeah, as you can see, there are a lot of cutscenes in this run, but I feel like, um, you know, honestly, for me, that sort of thing gives me a good breather. I know it puts off some people, but I like it a lot. There's, um... There's one area in this specific opening cutscene that you never visit throughout the entire event any percent, which is because they lock it away to the post game, and it's like weird that they show it so early, but I guess they just want to show you every area. Um, but I don't know, I always found it really funny. But yeah, um, yeah, we're just seeing like, all the different areas and everything. Um, One thing I like about this game, too, is that, um, it's more of an open- it's not like open world in the sense of, like a game like, um, Legends Arceus or, um, Scarlet and Violet are, but they're definitely much more open areas with a lot more exploration in this game and in Park 1, um, which I feel like, um, you know, some people look at this game and they're like, oh, um, you know, it's a bit easy, and I do think that is the case. It is a, it is definitely not that hard of a game in terms of difficulty on the base level. But I do think it has a lot of interesting mechanics and ideas. And I always like the, the animations and, like, voice lines in these games. Which, fun fact, you know, if you're ever looking for a um, non-copyright reason to... Like, like, if you're making a YouTube video or something and you're like, I don't want to get copyright claimed by using a voice clip from the anime, <laughs> you can just take the voice clips from this game because they're all anime voice clips from the same, like, voice actors and everything for all the different Pokemon in Gen 5. So, here, we need Oshawott. Who's suspicious about some goings on. Honestly, Oshawott is pretty bold, because immediately after he falsely accuses you of something, he's like, Hey, give me ten berries now. Um, which, you know... It's, it's a bit bold of him, but, you know, I respect the hustle, I guess. <laughs> So we get to go back here to Croft Rock, and it'll take us to Wish Park. But you know, we have to pay for Piplup too, by the way. So I guess really, um, Piplup did what Oshawa couldn't in stealing ten of our berries. So I guess it's the berries that Piplup just gave you, so it doesn't really matter. One, one thing I like about this game, I don't like the length of the loading screens, obviously, you know, a bit long, but I do like the cute little animations they play in all of them, you know. So, here we get introduced to Wish Park. Ooh, mysterious.
Iya. The rain definitely starts off a bit slow, so I guess while I'm in this section, I'll go ahead and start talking about um, some stuff to expect, but also, you know, here we get introduced to Gothita. In this definitely not suspicious scenario, I mean, they're just doing a free cake. Nothing to worry about. Okay. And it looks like everyone else has found their way here too, through this mysterious portal. Honestly, um, it always off put me even just the first time I say sell the place because of just the way the whole sky is. It's like, it's just so ominous. <laughs> so, I guess is the point, but still. Jump up for a slope to save a tiny bit of time. And then we get to find out what this whole cake business is all about. Really, Pan Sage is, and Pan Poor is this guy at the amusement park that rides the same roller coaster 50 times. <laughs> but honestly, if I got free cake, then yeah, worth it, honestly. So, now we get to approach the first attraction. There are four attractions in this game. Um, none of them are actually time based. Um, for like the sake of a speed run. Unlike the first game, there are a lot more attractions in the first game. Um, this game is a much bigger focus on the story and the um, battles and stuff than the actual like mini games. Which, you know, I think is a shame, honestly, because there could have been a lot more interesting stuff they implemented, but at the same time, you know, it's neat. But, you know, I'm doing a really bad job with this minigame. I'm missing all of them. Oh no. But, um, no, you don't have to get any points in this minigame at all. Um, in Park 1, there's like a ton of minigames, and some of them do affect the time, but in this game, all four of the minigames are sort of just auto-scrollers in terms of time, like, say I have a timer in the corner of them. Um, except for one of them, but that's a rhythm game, so that doesn't really, it's still not going to be time strict. Um, but yeah, we're going to have to play this minigame again later, um, with a much harder version. But for now, we don't have to do anything, it's just going to, it'll let us progress no matter what we do, so I'm just going to get zero points. Um, but coming up, we'll be finally getting past the sort of intro tutorial section of the game after, um, just a bit more of this. So, we're coming up on the mask fight, and this fight is not super hard. It uses the Iron Tail, um, which is the third of like the three types of attacks. You have a Shake Attack, a Charge Attack, which is holding the one button, and a Dash Combo Attack, which is just pressing one and hitting them over and over again by dashing into them. Dash Combos are usually the strongest. The Charge Attacks usually, um, you know, they take time to charge, but can be done with your Shake Attacks, so sometimes they're better. And then there's the, um, the take attacks themselves, which tend to do higher amounts of damage, but take a lot of, um, frames and just time. So there's a, there's a bunch of mix of how you have to route it, depending on what your needs are in the given point in different fights and everything. But we'll get a bit more into that later. Um, this upcoming fight will mainly use Iron Tail because it's set up as a sort of, um, knock them out of the ring sort of, um, setup. I always like that um, cake there for Oshawott, too, going to rescue us from being captured. And then we get to see that everyone has gone cake wild.
But yeah. So it's time for Pikachu to act. So this fight shouldn't take a bunch of time, but it's just sort of a... You know, it's very easy to accidentally miss one of them. So I usually just go there, hit, and do dodge left, and then shake the remote to do that. Which, dodging is just double tapping and left to right, and then it'll move like in that direction. But now, we're getting chased out of Wish Park by... Actually, I guess we're being captured back into Wish Park, but we're running away from him. Just like, wait a second. There you go. By... I don't know who it is. Who could it be? It's Master Hand and Crazy Hand. That's who I think it is. Um... For now, we gotta escape. I really like the music in this game. It's really dramatic. It's for no good reason, really, but it really sells the story, I think. Just looking at the cute book on the weird faces. Not Piplup. Oh no. That's okay, we have better Piplup anyway. In the form of Oshawott. And now here's where the actual part of the game part of the game begins. So, we're tasked with solving the case of the disappearing Pokemon, figuring out what's going on with Wish Park. Sometimes a patch trap will fall from that um, awning up there. There's going to be another chance later for it. It'll just randomly happen. I'm going to bonk you for no reason. Um, I, technically not fast. I did want to waste that time anyway. Um, okay, so coming up, I need to get Rainbow Pearls or a section later in the game. Um, but essentially, it'll let me perform a trade to get a really fast friend later. Um... But there are only a few specific chests that can have the Rainbow Pearl item, so normally you'd reset for it, which, you know, this late into the run to have to reset is a bit annoying, but it's like a 1 in 3, maybe a bit higher than that chance. Um, sometimes I'll get it like 8 times in a row, sometimes I won't get it 8 times in a row, <laughs> but regardless, you know, back to the game. But, um... There's a backup, so I don't have to worry about whether or not I'm getting the pearls. If the pearls don't show up in the three spots they can show up in, um, then that's okay. But for now, Samurott says, Hey, Oshawa, you don't can't do this yourself. Fight Pikachu so you can get beat up. So this one uses a big combination of everything. We use a dash combo, Thunderbolt, and then charge a Thunderbolt while we're doing the Iron Tail of the hit him, and then do a quick fight. The strategy for this fight has changed completely a bunch over time. But for the longest time, it was a 193, and I was like, it has to be a 194, and it took me like a year to figure that out, in terms of just like, how much I was just like, what is it? So that's normally where like the first split would end, that's how like I usually reference my runs, but... This is a decent start, I think. Um, so now that we have Oshawa on our team, we can switch between Oshawa and Pikachu, which is a big difference from the first game where you're only playing as Pikachu. And I think it really makes the gameplay more interesting because you can really easily get used to one battle system and one thing, but having multiple characters to do different things can really spice it up. 
Okay, there's no pearl location over here, so that pearl isn't going to be here. Okay, well, actually, what? He swims. That's his whole gimmick. But he's also pretty good at fighting, as you'll see later. Lomomola is also a pretty easy chase, but that's okay. So, Lomomola tells us what we already knew about how Croc Croc and Sandal brought people to Wish Park, which, you know, we knew because we were told to go to Wish Park by them, but I guess we didn't know that somehow. Anyway, we need to go to Coke Town to rescue them. So, whenever a Pokemon spawns in like this, it resets a lot of the locations for Pokemon and everything. Um, which is useful in some cases, but more so in the first game than this one. So, this chest can have Rainbow Pearls, or it cannot. It's just completely luck. Ooh, floods. Okay, that's not lucky. But, there are more chances for them. And, like I said, even if I don't get it immediately, I'll have a lot more um, time for it later. So, normally I wouldn't be going for the berries on this first tree here, but I actually want to secure my berry route a bit more, because this run requires I get seven red berries and a few green berries as well. Um, so I'm going to try and hit that tree um, right here before I go into the lighthouse. I do... I don't know what I like. There's like a name for them, like pal swapping mini games or whatever. Uh, no, but didn't get good luck. Only um, green bear berries. That's okay. But yeah. So we have to go in here and start like these first of the pal swapping mini games or whatever. And this one isn't that difficult. Um, you know. Ma making sure you press the buttons really quickly and like do the jumps like very tightly and everything is really about the most there is. There's like a bit of optimization to it, but generally speaking, it's not that complicated. But I do like to try and jump up and get that green berry because sometimes you can miss um, green berries and not end up getting 10 just on accident. So there's the more you take, the better chance you have of making your berry goals. It if you do it correctly, it doesn't waste any time. I lost like a fraction of a second there because it'd be 48 on that timer if it wasn't, but... Um, well, I was supposed to jump up that side there, but that's okay. That's only like one second slow, so... Not bad. So, now that we've got the, um... What do you call it? The, um... Lumber or whatever you need to repair the bridge. The hammer, I think, is what it was. Um, we can go back to timber, but because we don't have the pearls, I'm going to check one more time to see if there's potentially any more. Okay, there's not one here. Okay, there is, is a spawn down here, so I'm going to run down here and check one more time before I do it. Because I can do the backup. Um, but, you know, the backup also is, like... Takes a whole full extra minute, so I'd rather take all the RNG chances I can before I do that. Um, okay, there's no pearl over here this time, so that's fine. Honestly, if, if it's not going to spawn in, I'd prefer it not be there at all in that or area because all the extra movement adds up over time for the run. Okay, I will have to hit this tree again. No red berry. Unlucky. But yeah. So there's actually a glitch here where you can do a clip in a specific spot to upwarp the cove town before you um actually get the lumber for timber or whatever, which will let you get into the cove town in a very glitched state. Um, it's really precise and not really useful for speedruns, though, because of the way the game is kind of locked down by progression flags. Um, but you can actually freeze the game that way, on like just any console, um, by doing that up warp. Um, 
I like to show it off sometimes on my stream whenever I just have the time to, but I'm in the middle of a run, so obviously I can't do that. But I will show you a glitch soon that it's called Pika Clip. Um, this one, this first one I'm going to show you is right after the this upcoming Croc Rock fight, which is an easy fight. You just do the shake, the razor shell shake for Oshawott twice. Um, but essentially, the way this glitch is going to work is that um, the when Pikachu is above like a 90 degree, like not a slope, but just like an edge that falls down, you can potentially like move Pikachu very slightly off the edge in a way that oh, I'm supposed to switch to Oshawa. Okay, I can do the battle with Pikachu actually. That's fine. <laughs> You're supposed to just shake the Wii Remote and then run up to Croc Rock and shake the Wii Remote, but if you already talked to it as Pikachu, you might as well do it as Pikachu. Okay, okay well, I accidentally pressed an M, so I guess I'm going Oshawa. Whatever, that's fine. You can show up the actual way it's intended to be. Yeah, the, the menuing in this game is a bit weird. Like, there's kind of a delay whenever the menu pops up, like the yes-no menu before you can move it. I don't think that's actually the case on the PAL versions of the game, but I think there's like a loading difference in the PAL versions that make the US and PAL versions about the same anyway, in terms of time. But yeah, this fight is really easy. But essentially, um, when you switch Pokemon over a flat ledge, there's a chance that Pikachu, that the game gets confused about like Pikachu's elevation if you're only, if you're kind of like half floating. And it'll just clip you through the ground, and sometimes and it'll like warp you back to the entrance of the area, wherever that is you last came in from. So this is only faster if you do it like perfectly the first try, which I usually don't, so I don't normally do this in runs, but you know, because there's not a ton of glitches in this game, I might as well show this one off here too. It, it won't cost me that much time if it takes like a tiny bit of time to switch Pokemon. I think my estimate is pretty generous on this run anyway. So you switch Pikachu and you go over here, change the camera angle, I fell off a bit, but too far up. So you want to switch Pikachu, not quite far down now. There we go. And then Pikachu just falls through the floor and we're the entrance to the area. Easy peasy. But yeah, the game gets confused with the elevation of Pikachu over those edges, I think. And it kind of um, messes with it and makes you clip to the floor. That's why that other glitch, the Covary early thing I was talking about, um, is a bit. Um, it, it upwarps you. That's how it upwarps you. It kind of notices the balcony up there and it's like, oh, hey, Patra. Um, sorry, I just drilled my train of thought. Um, it notices the balcony up there and decides, I'm going to put you at a higher elevation instead of a lower one. Okay, so here's the first portal. These are the reasons people don't like running this game. You know, getting friends takes time, so why not just shake the Wiimote harder instead? The person said as they made their arm really tired. Um, really optimized this game with Wiimote shaking. I'm very good at it compared to most people, but even still, I'm not perfectly optimal. There's a route beyond this one that can cut out an extra friend that I don't do because it's just too tough on your arms. So, my arm is really tired for that, and you have to do that several times trying to run. Um, but that's not the hardest one. The hardest ones are the is Arbor area and Crag area, because you don't get any extra friends there. And you, you get like the bare minimum between what a human can reasonably do. Um, matter of fact, I was messing up a lot in practice before here, before now, and I was worried I was going to just need to get the back up and do a slightly worse route than the than this one. But I've 
you know, I workshopped it and figured out what I was doing a bit wrong with my shaking. Um, it managed to get it to where it's not not going to be a problem for this run, but you'll see that later. Now that we're here, we have to do Operation Rescue Everyone with two people. This was probably not a good idea. You know, we just ran away and like, oh, now we need to just come back and get caught again. I don't, I don't know. Everyone's dizzy around here, and sometimes those Pokemon can get in the way and lose you a bunch of time because you keep bonking into them. <laughs> but it's okay. Papagrigus is very um, good at giving exposition. Um, he's like um, Team Rocket levels of just. <laughs> Uh, he's trying to be ominous, but he just ends up being like, oh, here's the free information. Technically, it's better to pick Pikachu for all the minigames, but I'm going to pick whichever one is the best Pokemon for it. So in this case, Oshawott's the best, because this is the beach area. So you want to get 30,000 points. You can theoretically get all those points in the first section. I've gotten like 2,900. But I haven't quite managed to get the full 30k. I'm just going to try and get as many of them as I can for this minigame. But you can use both A and B to press the button, which means that you can end up just kind of mashing it a bit, and getting more points than they probably intended you to get. Oh. Even so, I'm not doing that great of a job at it, to be honest. This is definitely one of the parts where it's like, oh, this is a marath like a marathon with like donations and stuff, and they're like, oh yeah, I read the donation. But you know, obviously. Not the case. So keep trucking along. But you know, like I said last time, this is only the first half of the minigame. I got 2700, that's I mean 27,000, that's not that bad, but. But yeah, you can also just kind of double press the thing and completely ignore the fact that they're supposed to like bounce up or whatever. So, um, coming up after this, there's going to be two different fights, um, they're both, they're both done with Pikachu, and at one point we used to use Oshawott, but, um, there was a lot of routing stuff that happened where we realized switching Pokemon a bunch in the run because the fight's like two seconds faster ends up losing time because you're switching Pokemon, um, back and forth a bunch. And there's just a bunch of small things like that that kept adding up to making the route like very different than it used to be. Along with just the fact that we realized you can do different things in different fights we didn't realize. This. Oh, wait, no, I wasn't paying attention to that last one. Good point. Play ads, yeah. It's also equally boring. Or equally worth doing. Okay, but now that the um, auto scroller mini game is done, Alphagrigus is salty that we won. So, he says no, but I say yes. So, we get to go and fight. He sends his mask to beat us the first time, which. I don't know why he would do, we already beat them once. <laughs> we had to beat the mask twice and then beat him. But this time we aren't actually beating the mask, we're actually just beating up a cake. Um, which is a shame because why waste perfectly good cake, but you know, I guess if it's mind control cake, you have to fight it. Unfortunately. I 
It's actually not better to just go out and just straight up hit it over and over directly. I, this is not the way you're supposed to do it. I messed up a bit, but that's okay. You have to like um, dash combo twice and then jump and use Iron Tail a couple times because um, the way the damage adds up, it's just kind of, it's a bit weird. But this is the more interesting part of the fight. You have to kind of wait the time through the invincibility frames for a lot of this. Um, so you jump forward and then Iron Tail because that can hit him. That was actually a pretty good fight. Um, it's almost a 287, which is the better, best you can do on this fight, I think. Um, but yeah, a lot of the time you'll go through invincibility frames and um, you'll attempt not to... You'll, you'll wait intentionally so that you can um, time your attacks to do more damage. Um... Sometimes it's easy, and sometimes it's tighter. That one wasn't that bad, because you have, like, a voice cue with the Coffee Grigus voice line. There'll be other times where it's a bit harder, but that's not for a while. So now, we get to the Witch Bell, and Pikachu bumps his head on it. Which frees everyone from the curse. I love watching Munchlax in this cutscene. He's so sad, he's like, come on. We're leaving. I was supposed to... okay. Um... So there's another Pika clip that we're doing right after this. Um... After all this discussion is over. Um... Which is very similar to the other one, you know. But it's, it's a bit clearer than the, like, sort of edge that we need because it's very obvious in the way the step the step up is. But, you know, Puffy Greek is, is going to give us more exposition um, because he's really just doesn't know when to quit. But luckily, Gothita does. So, or Gotharita? Wait, I think I'm going to mix them up. Anyway. Oh, three, no. okay, yeah. <laughs> so this cut, this upcoming peak clip is like, if you get it like first or second try, it's pretty good. The more the more times you have to t take the switch, you know, the less save it is. But this one's very easy because you can just kind of watch Pikachu Shadow. That one was really good. That was first try. That's what you want to see. Um, so, in comes the pressure wrong, which I always point out the voice line sounds like it's a whale. It doesn't sound like it's like a Pokemon, like a lot of them do. They kind of just like a whale noise. <laughs> At least that's what I think it is. <laughs> Ashiram is saying, we're destined to save the world from the disaster. But it would be a lot easier if you did it. <laughs> but I guess we'll have to do it. But, you know, whatever. I guess it wouldn't be a game if that happened, though. But now Oshawott is really confused floating back. So if I don't see a pearl on the pier as I'm running up here, I'm going to have to go into the lighthouse and get the rainbow pearl there because essentially um the devs put pearls in there as like a reward for when you redo the thing so that you still get something at the end of it if you clear it when you're rematching it okay we don't get to see a patch rack falling off the top of the um cliff but that's okay So you befriend Drifblin. A lot easier than it is in Park Point. Okay, there's no um, pearl here, so we're going into the lighthouse. 
Because the pearl would be on the left side of that lighthouse if it was there. Um, that one normally isn't there, though. Unfortunately, it's usually just luck. But... It's the same layout as it was before. Clearly, when you get to post game, though, they actually change the layout of these areas up a bit. They extend them and have like more stuff in them. And I think like I feel like the pearls are supposed to be something you get um in the post game through this area if you haven't gotten it already is like a reward for doing it again, I guess. But um the dev still just put it in here too on the regular version, so we can still just get three of them, which is more than we need, but we only can use one, so. And watch, I'm going to run out to the right here, and there's going to be a um, test there that has the pearls in it. <laughs> It'll happen. Um, okay, nope, it won't. That's good. Makes you feel better. <laughs> Anyway, um, Sam Rock talks to us and is like, hey, time to go. You are not done yet. So we're like, okay, fine. I guess we need Piplup anyway. Even though I have new Piplup, so I don't really need Piplup, but... Oh, I did get a bunk patch rat. Getting late, so if you're... In my time zone. Put on your fluffy blankets, why don't you? Um, yep, I'm gonna fly to Pope Town. So, in Poke Park 1, you can kind of skip this cutscene with like the plus button <laughs> um, after the first time you view it, but unfortunately, the devs made a different cutscene for every single area. So, in this version, you have to watch the cutscene for every single area before you can press the plus again in that area for Driftblim. Which is a bit annoying, because <laughs> it means you have to watch the fast travel cutscene extra times, but... Regardless, we're now in Cove Town, and we didn't have to run all the way up that long path to get here. So, coming up is going to be the um, duop fight, which is a pretty difficult fight in terms of um, strategy. Um, You'll be seeing the first instance of a trick called the dash combo jump cancel, which basically is whenever you get to the third hit of your combo with Oshawa or Snivy, um, the game still lets you jump there, so you can cancel out your like lag frames or whatever um, by jumping and then using another um, attack. So in this case, like a razor shell will work. Um, and we'll use that to get a very fast duop fight. As well as just some careful dodges and movement. Okay, let's see. Is the duot in a convenient position? I don't... Oh, duot's back there. Okay, I'll talk to you and then go get duot then. I don't know. So this fight can actually be faster depending on if you're close to a wall or not. Because the um whenever you knock back do what, you have to spend some time running towards him. Every time to like get back to where he is. Uh, it's in the town, they can actually kind of screw up this fight a bit. But yeah, so we're jumping and then using Razor Shells. Oh, well I still got him. I just missed the minute it went all the way around. Yeah, that fountain can really um, mess with the camera angles and make that fight a bit weird. But So after we did that, we can upgrade our dash combo. And we used to upgrade it multiple times. Um... But I went through and did the math for how long each of the fights takes and everything, and I was like, well, it's actually better to just not and keep those berries to upgrade the 
dash earlier for um, Snivy. So now we only get one upgrade, which makes some of the fights a lot harder. But at the same time, um, it makes certain things just routing-wise a lot easier. Unfortunately, it does mean we have to get um, the RNG berries instead of just having the berries, but there's always backups if that doesn't end up working out. So this fight shouldn't be hard. Sometimes it randomly is, and you just get knocked back for no reason when you're... But I don't really know why that is. Just occasionally he'll use a different attack. Usually this isn't an issue, but I went through a um, period of time where it just happened all the time for some reason. Oh, wait. Well, that was... Okay, it was so easy, but I did it wrong. I was supposed to um, just dash straight into him instead of trying to jump early. I was remembering the wrong fight for a second, um, but that's okay. It was still fast, it was just not like instantaneous fast like it usually is, but... But yeah, so coming up is Arbor Area, and this area has a lot of hard things. First off, um... We'll see the reason we got the Rainbow Pearl. As well as, you know, there'll be some cutscenes and stuff, but, you know, cutscenes always story. But, yeah. This will be the last time we... Well, I don't think it's the last time we talk Crooked Isle, but it's the last time we, um, care about, like, any of the... Well, most of the stuff in Coke Town. We're going to revisit and come back later to upgrade Snivy's dash. And we used to get, um, or at least I used to get the um, Shake Sprint here, which is, doesn't require an upgrade, but just lets you, some of the chases be easier because you have like a special technique. But having to find Blitzel multiple times in the random spawns it can be in, it actually just take a lot of time. But it does make some of these fights a bit... I mean, some of these chases coming up a bit um, awkward. But yeah, Carablast, you're the reason that we get this Rainbow Pearl, because we get a trade of for 300 berries, which is a lot at this point in the game. Because that's more than we've gotten so far combined. It's just, it's such an advantage, and it's an instantaneous friend, that it just puts you really on a good spot for the rest of the run. Okay, there is a red berry here, so it wasn't a total waste. But that being said, you know, having to reset board is obviously not the best, but it makes this area faster, so there's that. But now we meet Snivy, who's really interested, and Oshawott is not having any of it. I don't see Whimsicott anywhere. There's Mankey. Mankey! Oh, there's Whimsicott, but I, it was too far away. Normally I get Whimsicott with Pikachu, but there's a chance I'm going to end up just having to get it with um, Snivy, which is... Technically it's actually faster, but um, having to move out of your way for a really bad Whimsicott spawn is not ideal, usually. So usually you just hope it's on your way. I love Snivy in this area. Just... <laughs> just completely um, making fun of Oshawott. There's actually a um, I, I wanna say the Whimsicott chase that we're gonna have to do is a very hard chase. Your Pokemon are not fast enough to be doing that chase, but the game lets you cut it off. Sometimes I don't see Whimsicott. Okay. I guess we're waiting. They don't normally wait on it, but... Yeah. Okay. I was playing on doing it with Pikachu, but I guess I don't have to. I guess I'll do it with Snivy, then. Um... But even with Snivy, it's not an easy chase. Um... You have to cut off... Cut it off doing loops around the area, because your Pokémon are not fast enough to catch up with it, and even if they were, they would run into the spores that it drops behind it. I love this... the line you just dropped. Snivy, you're a girl. As if it's like the most astounding thing in the world. Just, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Let's 
So, we're going to find the invitation to the berry party. But first, we have to go and get more berries ourselves. So, we have a red berry. Supposed to have seven, so not ideal, but we have several more chances. And yeah, this tree is one of the better. Yeah, this one gave me four red berries. Okay. That's put me in a good shape then, actually. So I'm probably going to get enough berries then. And now we get to meet, um, should I have used mom or grandma or I guess mom, but. And now we gotta go find Deerling. And Snivy's running off to who knows where. Okay. So we used to go for that chest um, earlier, but we started waiting to get it because I realized that it's much faster to just drop down instead of trying to jump up those annoying platforms. <laughs> this tree is also a really good tree for berries. I need just two more red berries and I think I'm good. And uh, I got them, but I got bonked. That's like a random time loss you can get when a berry just hits your head. <laughs> it's really dumb and stupid, but it happens. Okay, so this chase has a specific setup you have to follow, because your Pokemon are not fast enough to do it without Shake Sprint. But the game luckily has a um, bit of a flaw in the way it programmed the chase path. If you're too far away, the Pokemon won't start running away. And you can kind of take advantage of this to cut off um, Snivy in a way you're not supposed to be able to easily. Which... You know, technically, even without Shake Sprint, you can still do this um, chase, but it's a lot harder. Because you have to, like, cut it off right at the end, and it's, like, 40 seconds in, so it's super slow. But yeah, you can just jump over here, and then... Oh, well, I missed for some reason. But luckily, I realized the other day, you can also, if you screw that up, you can just run around this way. And Snivy will turn around, which is better than chasing it the whole way down, I'll tell you that. Yeah. What? I missed again? Really? <laughs> I swear I don't screw this up this much, but it happens. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to chase it all the way down then. Is that... I'm gonna lose this chase. This will be, this will be annoying. Yeah, this chase is like, it's not normally hard, but sometimes it's just really stupid. <laughs> um, If you're like, not fully just 100% focused and do it exactly the way you need to. No, I didn't cut it off quite. No. Uh, okay, I'll just redo it. It's fine. Let's try to do it correctly. Not ideal, but that's okay. It happens. It's weird because it's not like that hard, but it's just that when you do mess it up, you can't really recover it that easily. Pikachu just not fast. There we go. That's how it's supposed to go. <laughs> you just cut it off immediately. Obviously, it's a big time loss, but you know, it happens sometimes. The run I got, like, in practice um, the other day, had, like, the only mistake in it was just that Snivy thing, and everything else was just, like, really good. Well, except for some, like, weird remote shaking stuff, but that... that... That's just tiring, you know. So, for a lot of our movement for the rest of the game, we're going to be using Snivy. Snivy's just faster. And it has, like, much more movement options that you'll see coming up. Um, just overall, I mean, it's still even not that far behind. It's, like, two or three minutes behind, which... Um, for this point in the game, is not, like, amazing, but at the same time, a lot of your time loss... RNG stuff and just small mistakes is usually going to be early game, early to mid game. So, 
Snivy has the ability to double jump, which you know you see here. And it'd also be a good show of um you know, the, the next Pokemon switching thing, but you know, you gotta do that quickly, obviously. Um, you don't really use Pikachu in this one at all. You just use Snivy and Oshawott because Pikachu is just slow. But this is what I was trying to do in that other area. But you kind of leaf tornado, which you can still move during and kind of slide some over. So it's faster to just do this than trying to go all the way around. Yeah. Shortcut it instead of trying to wait for that platform cycle. Or try to like. The Leaf Tornado can give you a lot more small movement options, and there'll, there'll be some really cool tricks in about 40 minutes or so related to it, but, you know, that's a while off, so we'll hold back on explaining all that for now. I think I have enough berries, I'm pretty sure, but I'm going to try and get one more just in case, because I... Okay, that's three more, so I definitely have enough now. Um, I only do that because I am... World renowned known. Maybe not world renowned, but just, I am known for being bad about that and um, not getting enough berries without realizing it. And Shady Neko, who mentioned talking chat earlier, <laughs> had to correct me. He's done that in several different runs because I just mess it up. I'm actually gonna, I usually do um, Seismitoad because it's a really easy fight, but Deerling's faster and I have extra berries, so I actually can justify it. I didn't think I was gonna get three berries there. I only needed like one. So this is a chase that um Okay that I think that path was a bit weird, but yeah, this is not a hard chase. Um normally whenever you do seismitoad, it gives you a hundred berries, which is why you'd want to do that, but because we have extra berries, we can do the 50 berry dearly instead. And the reason dearling is faster than seismitoad is even though seismitoad isn't basically an instant kill. Um, Seismitoad has the flaw of summoning Stunfisk, which has like a whole cutscene and stuff to it, and then an extra text box, um, which wastes enough time to where you'd rather get a different friend. Okay, so I need to remember, I need to get Whimsicott here, because I didn't get it earlier. Whimsicott, where are you? You're in the back, okay, I see you. It's not that far. It, it, it can be a lot worse. I've had runs where Whimsicott ruins a run completely because it's been in the back area where you, like, all the way back by that tree back there and just ruin runs. So this is that hard chase. Um, really lucky people will have... Um, see, Snivy can actually, like, kind of catch up with it. That You have to cut it off like that. Yeah, I did... I did I was pretty sure I didn't need it, but I was like, well, I can do Deerling if I get him, if I get enough anyway. But also, just like, I wanted to make sure because this is a marathon run, I didn't want to reset. Okay, I need to make sure to switch Pokemon. Um, but yeah, Mankey can be really fun in this area because if you run into him, he forces you into a mandatory fight. Well, you mean you can give up or whatever, but like, at that point, you might as well take the extra friend. Um,. And this can just happen randomly. It can happen at the end of the game when you have to revisit this area. So, you just waste 30 seconds for no reason because you don't need any extra friends at that point. <laughs> okay, so... There's gonna be a really difficult portal in a second, but first we have to do this fight. Um, usually this fight goes well. It just takes advantage of more of that, um... Jump dash combo cancel. Um, I mentioned earlier. Alright. Oshawa, once again, is going to be our fighting Pokemon. Um, but we have to be careful about the Big Sharp knocking us back here. So we have to be very careful about our jumps and everything. So we jump over these and then we turn directly around. And manage to combo him barely before he um, goes into his invincibility frames there. That was a perfect fight. That's what you want to see from that fight. So, now that he's done attacking us for no reason, he doesn't give us friends, which would make this a lot easier. If they befriended us after this fight, this whole section for this portal and everything would be much more manageable. 
overall. <laughs> but instead, it's a complete nightmare. But anyway, um, so this portal is really difficult. To illustrate how difficult it is, um, you need to ha get um, essentially 158 Wii Remote Shakes within the span of 15 seconds. And these Wii Remote Shakes are not ones you can cheese or do anything with to make it easier. I've tried, it's not possible, that requires too harsh of a Wii Remote Swing. You have to just full-fledged just send it <laughs> and hope for the best. So I'm going to be a bit quiet for a second. You might hear me shake the Wii Remote, but that's about it. I was a bit iffy on this in practice because it was I was actually getting really bad, really oh, only barely making it results until yesterday. So hopefully I'll do it properly. If not, there's always a backup. But That was a really good one, actually. <laughs> so, there's the technically harder version of this area you can do that, like, nobody does because it's way too hard is 14,400 points, which means you have to do 180 Wii Remote Shakes in fi in 15 seconds. That is so tiring. And I'm going to have to do that Wii Remote Shake I just did um, again in um, the next area because th that's about the exact same difficulty in that area. But that there is the reason that people don't um, speedrun this game actively as much, because it's a real toll. At least compared to Poke Park 1, anyway. Poke Park 1 is a lot of people that are willing to give it a try. Of course, there's also the cutscenes and stuff, you know. But that that's a big reason. That's why there's, like, there's an active community in this game. Um, Shoutouts to Crete and... Um, Baz and Mulis and a few others. Um, that my brain's not thinking of the names of right now. Um, that run All Friends, which is a like seven hour long run with a lot of RNG and cool f stuff in it. Um, but yeah, this fight's another one of those with the specific pattern. Um, if you do it perfectly, it works out well, you get a really quick fight. If you do it wrong, then it might not be as quick. It can even sometimes derail into you not making the fight at all and losing. Okay, that worked. So this upcoming minigame is a fan favorite. Um, if you played this game before, you probably know why. But unfortunately, I don't have a camera on, so you can't see me playing it, but that's okay. The only reason I don't have a camera on is because it's, it's a pain to get a good Wii, remote, Wii set up. Um, when you have to do... But yeah, luckily you rescued Zorwick from being mind controlled. But yeah, um, shoutouts to the whole All Friends community and Puck Park too. They have a whole route and it's a very um, interesting run that I want to do one day. I just haven't really had the time to because that's such a long bulk run. But there's a lot of even harder fights than some of the stuff you'll see in this run that are in that run. Um, and it's just amazing the amount of time just been in, put into it and everything. And they helped make a lot of stuff in any percent possible as well. So we used to run this area with Snivy, and um, the, the switching time made it not worth it, but Sudowoodo in particular just loves being in the way. <laughs> just dancing without a care.
As tacky and gaudy as this attraction is, it's in this area, so Snivy's the best Pokemon at it. That's right. We get to dance. I think the point cap in this game is like 7200. I've gotten really close to it, but I don't think I've ever gotten the full perfect score. But we'll see. So far, so good. No. Oh man. Oh, we missed the full clear on it. it the cap is 71k for Snivy. I think you can actually get more points with some of the other friends because the mini game gets harder with different friends, but. Regardless, we can now play Dance Inferno with other players, and it'll be just like a Just Dance game, except with only one song. But hey, worth it. I don't see like watching Oshawa dance a lot, but Snivy is obviously the the main pick for this fight. I mean, for that mini game. Um, Chandler. So this fight is actually pretty tough relative to some of the other fights in the run. Um, the first part is a lot of, um, you have to be very careful about your timing and your positioning and like knowing where your attacks are going to land because otherwise you can really get caught off guard by the amount of damage you're taking, um, specifically with the final section or just get knocked back a bunch and waste a bunch of time even if it's not like necessarily killing the run or anything. The second part I'll kind of explain as that one starts up, but for now we have to deal with these um, stage lights. Which, this part's pretty easily dealt with with a razor shell. Then you come dash and hit one and then kind of jump over here to razor shell and hope it hits all of them. It didn't, but that's okay, that worked out still. And now the speakers are coming at us, a lot heavier and more dangerous. So... Okay, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why. Okay, that's fine. Not exactly the way I meant to do it, but... Okay, I actually think I got a good fight here. Oh, I missed. Never mind. <laughs> got a... I missed again? Really? Okay. Fine. Water gun. Yeah, the hitbox on that disco ball can be a bit weird, and sometimes I overestimate my distance I can cover. So this fight, I have to jump like immediately into a dash combo, intentionally not attack him, and then wait till a specific voice clip plays. You can get a really fast fight there. Okay, that's good. That's a really good fight. Um, that's pretty much how you want that to go. But yeah. 
So that fight can sometimes be um, a menace. A lot of the time you can recover it. Um, but if you're not prepared, you can lose a bunch of time if you manage to um, knock him below half health and don't kill him immediately. Or her, I don't really know if Shingle was a guy or a girl. Um, but... I don't even know if that's the only thing that's ever stated in the game, but... Um... Regardless, um... I think that, um... Chandler... It can be really hard to learn that fight. And the strategies have changed a lot recently, too. They'll probably change again whenever... I go to the zero upgrade route because I did recently test that and that's actually better, I think. It just hasn't been fully routed, so I'm not 100% confident, but I'm like 90%. So, luckily, we've been saved by Piplup and Zorwark from being, I guess, killed. That's what they, that's what's implied, but I don't know if that's what they were actually going to do. I mean, I guess, at, based on the way Pokemon stuff works, though, they probably would have just captured him and put him somewhere, but... But yeah, I always do a split um, in between each area, and then whatever I hit the bell. So, this would be a split, like, right up here. Um, this time, we won't be doing a peak clip to leave the area, because it's just faster to run out with Snivy than to try and bother. Because Snivy's a lot faster, and Snivy will continue to be fast for the rest of the run. Who is the best at dancing in this area? Vote now. <laughs> but, um... So we've saved Dance Zone. So far, we're on a decent pace. It's not like perfect because of all the snivy stuff that happened, but it's not terrible either. But we finally found Piplup. And now we can go home happily ever after, probably. Luckily, now that we've befriended Zoroark and Zorba, whenever we have to come back here later, it will not be a pain to the portals or whatever. And... Flip's decided to, um, he's gonna stay, which I feel like just because of jealousy, but also definitely that's what it is. But... Piplup is really a genius, staying in the place where the evil people are, so they can help, even though they're on a stranded island. Really, um, tactical mastermind. Honestly. Look, you know these places aren't connected, right? Like, I don't know how you're gonna go to the other area in Poke Park. You have to go all the way around these huge lanes to find new portals, and Piplup just gets dragged to the next area. And now, Zekrom shows up to tell us that once again, we must do something. I think I said Zekrom sounds kind of like a cow or whatever, making like a mooing noise, but I'm much less confident about that one. Like the voice line they used anyway. Because like all the other Pokemon have like their anime voices or whatever. I don't know if they sound like this in the anime. I haven't seen them in the anime. <laughs> I know there's a movie for it, but... Yeah. In our area is usually... You know, this part of the run and before is usually where most resets happen in the speedruns of this game. Um, in terms of, like, RNG resets and, like, different stuff like that. The rest of this run now, at this point, is mostly skill-based. Um, you know... The areas get um, 
covered a traverse and I've covered fights, but there's not as much just random luck stuff happening. It's a bunch of just story stuff with Pokemon and fixed spawns. Because at this point, we don't get any optional friends after this. We don't need to. Because the game just starts giving them out like candy. Okay, so now we'll fly back to Coketown and not see Sun Beach because I've accidentally <laughs> mashed into that a bunch of different times. But yeah, we have to watch this cutscene for this area because we haven't done it in this area yet. <laughs> so, now we're going to be getting um, Finding Blitzel to get the Snivy upgrades for the speed so that we can move a lot faster. Let's see, um, look behind me, um, uh, there you are. Found you. So, now we're gonna get Shake Sprint, because we have to get it first. But this chase is a lot easier, because it's meant for you to be you doing with Pikachu, or even Oshawa, but mostly Pikachu. Um, but instead, we don't need Shake Sprint, because we have Snivy. So we just catch up to it immediately, in like two seconds. <laughs> That's like the whole difference in Snivy speed compared to Pikachu's. Like, Snivy can just straight up catch up to Blitzel like in two seconds. Whereas Pikachu, you have to like shake and that makes your controls way, like, way less precise. But the good thing about getting all the berries now, all at once, is that we can just go ahead and do it in the same conversation and not have to find um, Blitzel again a second time after um, the crag area is over. Because we used to get a second upgrade for Snivy after Crag Area instead of just getting both of them here. But that used that ended up um, being an issue because having to go out of your way to find the randomly spawning Pokemon multiple times can really ruin runs sometimes. It can just be like a bunch of RNG time loss that you don't want. Whereas being right beside the Pokemon and not having to find it a second time is just time save inherently if you can get it. So now that we know everything, we're suddenly moving way faster. Speed. So now it's time to go to the crag, crag area. Did I get both upgrades? I think I did. I'm gonna press plus to just check my berries real quick. I think that's on the menu, in the plus menu. Yeah, okay, I got both of them. <laughs> For some reason I thought I didn't, I was like, oh, that's dumb. <laughs> no, I, I got it. So now you're probably starting to sense a pattern of like, you know, going into the area and then getting a new pal or whatever. But this is the last area with that pattern because there's only one more pal to get. But for now... We get to talk to Victini. He's looking for his friend. Wonder who that could be. We need a secret word, so we but he can't tell me it. But it'll just give me a hint, which you know, if nobody's listening in the conversation, you might as well just tell us. I don't Either way though, if you're if you're playing this game blindly and didn't read through whatever Victini said, um it's a multiple choice thing. And it it's the one with um a liter well not alliteration because it's not it's C and K, but it, I guess it's the same sound. Anyway, it's the same spot every time on the menu. So, you know, you're going to get it eventually. Okay, someone's in the cannon. Who is that? That big's a genius. He got stuck in the cannon trying to practice a move. Okay, 
Okay, how do we fire the cannon? Ask the person right by the cannon. Oh, well, this game is for the Wii. Um, or Wii U if you have the Wii disc, but it's still for the Wii, you know? Fire the cannon, yep. We have to switch to Oshawott now, because it automatically starts the fight as soon as you're firing from the cannon. And if you stay a Snivy and talk to the cannon, then you have to do the fight as Snivy, and Snivy is not good at this fight. <laughs> Okay, so... I'm to fight Tepig. But yeah, this game is for the Wii. So, in this fight, you have to be very careful about how you knock back Tepig, because that can change the difficulty of the fight, whether or not you're able to do it. Fortunately, I missed Tepig, but I was able to use Razor Shell to kind of still get a good time there. Um, you're supposed to hit him with both of those third hits of dash combos, and you'll win every time, in theory. But sometimes you just miss. Because <laughs> you have to time it a certain way, and I didn't time it right. But even if you miss, it's like a second or two. It's not a big deal. But... Time to join the battle tournament. So we have Tepig. Tepig as a pal is underwhelming because at this point we already have all the speed upgrades for Snivy and we have a dash upgrade on Oshawott, so what are we using Tepig for? Well, there's one use. Yep, that's right. That pig gets to do rock smash and heat crash. So, essentially, he's an HM slave. <laughs> You have to run over here since it's not that far. No, Doctor, thank you. Fly by cannon. That's a nice way to put it. Yeah, so now we get to do another one of those pal swap mini games, as like as I like to call them. Once again, I don't think this minigame has any Pikachu involved whatsoever. Like, there's no reason to use Pikachu here. <laughs> I don't know, maybe the devs assumed that Pikachu is your fastest Pokemon, so you'd be just defaulting to it. So this minigame, in addition to the Tepic blocks, adds these mines in the water, which can knock you back sometimes, and also these pickup items. Which aren't really that much of a threat or obstacle or anything, but are there to spice it up a bit. Now, it's actually faster to um, make sure whenever you do a um, try to break a block from beneath with Tepig that you jump beforehand instead of just doing it off of the ground. Um, it's like a small thing, but it saves a tiny bit of time. But you want to be Oshawott there, because even though um, Snivy's faster for movement, technically speaking, um, in practice, Snivy's single jump is actually really bad in terms of making the full height of what you need. So it's... I don't know why I switched to Oshawott, I meant to switch to Snivy. 
But, um, yeah, Snivy's small jump, a lot of the time, it'll just not make it, not make the jump. And if you try and do that, you'll end up either barely making it once and then falling back down, or you'll end up hover jumping your way up, which takes forever. Or, like, steps like that. I know from experience it's just so slow. So once again we talk to Embor so we can get back into the battle tournament area. Uh, okay. I don't think I've ever bumped into Tarumaka on the way up here before. I almost did it twice there. Okay, but obviously Snivy can't use Heat Crash, so we just gotta switch to Tepig and do it. Yeah, but it's faster to like jump a tiny bit and then use Heat Crash from midair than to try and do it from the ground. But unfortunately, you do it quickly, you kind of accidentally um, don't always make it as fast as you want it to be. But now we finally get to enter the battle tournament area. So, there's going to be a bunch of different um, fights and interesting things coming up. Um, after like a couple more cutscenes, but... This like upcoming set of, set of fights is... It took me a bit to learn them, but I don't think they're like... I don't think they're the hardest part of the run, but they're definitely... Um, Compared to some of the earlier fights in the run, can definitely um, throw you for a loop and lose you some time. A timid Tepig? No, I don't want to use timid on my Tepig. Or, I want a physical Tepig, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know which that difference timid is, so I, I think that's the right joke to make. Um. And Tepig's gonna saunter all the way over here and bump this, break this block, and then we switch to Snivy, who's better at this mini, at this specific fight, um, because this fight is not traditional. It's a knock right here, you're off the platform fight, essentially. Um, and th this fight can be a bit weird because Geodude is not easy to just knock in one direction all the time. It can be really easy to accidentally knock it in the wrong way, or Geodude will just not cooperate. And if you knock all of them off, you just have to do a long wait until any of them respawn. It's miserable. Um, so you gotta be really careful <laughs> about how you do this. I mean, I'm, it got better at it over time, but it took a while, because it's very easy to accidentally do something dumb. Like that, um, for instance. Yeah, that's fine, actually. I think. Yeah, that's the other thing about this too. Whenever you're trying to like micromanage your movement for this fight, um, it's not you'll accidentally dodge, like you saw there. Cause you like all it takes to do a dodge is a double tap in a given direction. That's a 78, so it's like five seconds slow, but it's not that bad. Um, but yeah, if you double tap in a direction, it makes you dodge, and usually that's a good thing. But for that fight and a couple other places, that just is really aggravating when you're trying to make a tiny adjustment for your um, height positioning. So now that we return to Bright Period, we get to make our way over to actually doing the battle tournament now. Because there's no one just sitting in the way. Okay, that was... Um... Oh wait, the gate is closed. Um... Oh no, the tournament's starting. Where is it? And then it points the camera straight towards the place you need to go. 
It's like a door of the explorer level, just like, okay, do you see that? Okay. Now, be careful not to run too far here, because... You do that, you fight with Snivy there, and the only Pokemon that's good in this fight is Pikachu, because Hydreigon is floating, and it's Dragon-type, so... Only certain attacks even do much. Mainly just Pikachu, because of the, iron, the steel type attack that it has. Or, like, Iron Tail and, um, Dash combos. So you have to do, sort of, some weird jumping stuff that makes it really easy to miss Hydreigon, unfortunately. In Hydreigon's Draco Meteor, can sometimes just hit you regardless. So you have to be very careful in this fight. That went well. That's a perfect fight. Okay, now we get into another hard portal. After some cutscenes. Um. This one's technically harder than the Arbor Area Portal I just did. Um, by like two Wii Remote Shakes, so it's like 160 instead of 158. Because of the way the points line up. This portal is free if you get, um, Bastiat on. Which is a very easy fight, and it gives you a decent amount of berries. But, you know, it's always better to just not take 30 seconds to get the extra friend, if you can. That being said, I do want there. I want to develop a route for this game that's like a like a miscellaneous category that involves getting more friends. Um, that's not like complete all friends, getting all of them, just getting like some of them. But I'm not sure what that would be yet. But I, because that that would make it more in line with what Park um one any percent is, and it would be a bit more accessible for a anyone to run. Rather than being like only people who can shake Wii Remote really hard. But yeah, if you want to um, see whether or not you can run this game, go through and just get the friends that only the ones I get, and then see whether or not you can do the portals. We have like no friends here, we can still do the portal. Okay, that was good. Luckily, there's no more hard portals from here on out. There's some that I'm still gonna have to like try on, but they're not gonna have to be like I'm gonna tire my arm out doing it. But the reason this area's portal is so easy is because the game only gives you bonuses for like certain specific Pokemon as friends, and the strong Pokemon bonus or whatever um, you get for Rhyperior is like 30 points. So by default, it ends up giving you a lot to work with. Glaceon here loves to be in the way, and so does Flareon. <laughs> um, but, nice change of pace, we get to do the fight first instead of after the minigame. And this time it's with Snivy, and not Oshawott. And you'll see the reason for it soon enough, but essentially, the, the first half of this section is a very long path that Snivy has to run through. And the time it takes to switch to Pikachu to do the Haxorus fight afterwards is just not worth it. In terms of like, all the extra menus and switching you'll have to do for that. It's easier just to not switch at all and just stay Snivy as slow as it feels. I do that fight, but we have a strategy to make it work, though. But for now, we gotta reach Hexorus.
I feel dumb. I meant I. I just looked at my Discord thing and realized that um. I meant to like ping in the Poke Park um speedrunning Discord for my run. And then I was like, oh, oops! I just kind of. I typed it out and I didn't press enter. Okay, so here's this fight. Oh no, I I I moved forward too early. My bad. Okay, I fixed it, I think. But yeah, you just have to do this over and over again. And then make sure that you're taking damage while he's taking damage. Okay, no. Hopefully I get Rhyperior as my helper. Yes, okay, that's good. That's the fast version. So, he'll just take out the rest of his health and make this a much quicker fight. You can also get Geodude, in which case you just have to do the rest of the fight with Snivy. It's still faster, but it's not... Lucky you lose like 10 seconds to it, but... Anyway, now it's time for them to fight back and take Bikini by force. And by that, I mean get beat up immediately. Okay. I'm not supposed to say yes, but I will. Yes, we're gonna create perks in eternal world, I cry. Man, peer pressure, fine, I won't join him then. Okay. Oh. I don't usually bonk there. That's weird. And now, because this is Crag area, we get to play as Tepig. Now this is a pork chop. Oh, <laughs> dumb joke. Um, so this mini game is um, basically like a karate dojo sort of thing where you just kind of hit the opponents at the right time or drop the bombs when they show up. You, I think I've almost got a perfect on this mini game before. Not super hard or anything, but. I wish they gave Tepig more than one voice line in this mini game. I actually got it perfect. <laughs> Which I mean, I could have done that better if I hit it faster, but otherwise. Yeah, perfect.
Yeah, I know, amazing joke, pork chop. But, <laughs> um, I'm excited for the next couple um, sections of the game because, well, really the rest of the game, honestly, are, except for like one specific stretch. Um, I really like enjoy in terms of like, I mean, I enjoy the whole game, but in terms of like the different strategies and stuff I get to show off. Um, because there's some harder fights there, and there's a lot of areas that have really interesting and, you know, fun movement. Which, some of it only be impressive if you played the game and have context for how the controls feel and everything, and what the area is normally like, but still. I think uh, it'll be interesting to show off. Um, but yeah, so we've saved the third zone. We've saved Victini. Victory, no more game, right? We win? This is, this is the last week. We get a new record? No? Okay, fine. Not Piplup. This is only the third time you've been captured, or I think. Maybe it's the second, I don't know. Pikachu sad once again. There's this like weird camera angle that happens right here sometimes, like right after this. Okay, it didn't, didn't happen that, that time. Sometimes the camera, when it loads in, will like load below the map and kind of pan upwards through the ground for like a split second. I don't know if that only happens in 4x3 actually, because I don't think I've... I don't usually play in widescreen, so maybe that's why I didn't see it there. Because normally I see it. But yeah. Since there's only two of those um, legendaries to go around, we don't get another um, legendary here. We just get to go immediately into the area afterwards. We get to talk to um, Embor and talk about how he used to be a crybaby. Which makes sense considering how Haxorch got kicked him earlier, but anyway. Oh no. Someone spilled ink on the screen. But the world's going into imbalance because of reasons that we have to figure out. Probably related to Wish Park. Okay, so Victini got told the exact location of the last portal. Which is really convenient for us, so we're going to the tech area. Which I think is the most trick heavy, like execution heavy sort of segment of the run. In terms of just like overworld sections. Iglesia, don't run in the way, please. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes, by the way, I talk, you can really tell which Pokemon like to get in the way. Okay. Now we're gonna go to Coke Town because trying to walk all the way back is very slow, obviously, because you have to go through a bunch of extra loading screens and stuff. With that being said, we aren't going to get any upgrades or anything, we're just going to go straight to the next area, because we got all the upgrades already that we're going to get for the run. I'm interested to see whether or not this run will be a sub-240. So far, I'm on pace for like a... I'm, I'm definitely on pace for it, because I'm plus like three and a half minutes about. Uh, we'll see. It depends on how well I do the fights and stuff later. Awesome. 
So we get to go straight into the tech area. The train depot. So anyone who loves trains, this is the area for you. Now we get to go up an elevator. And what purpose does that serve? Well, we get to see a broad view of the area. And then we get to just go back and down another elevator. So it was really um, useful um, of them to put that there. Anyway, though, we got to switch to Oshawa so we don't get bodied. So this fight's normally... This fight can be really tricky for me. Honestly, I'll probably do it okay, but it's really hard to do this fight perfectly. Um, it took me a lot of practice to get good at this fight, and it's not like it's that hard by itself. It's just, it's very hard to make the invincibility frames line up the way you want. Okay, that wasn't perfect, but it'll do. 188's good, I think. I think there's like a 191 is the best you can get on that fight. I don't know. Gerger is definitely not um, easy to do perfectly, I'll tell you that. Because there's a lot of nuances to how that fight can go. I had to like really workshop it to even figure out what the rest st best strategy was. And the timing on that is deceptively um, tight. But now we have to go up to Conkelder. And make sure to switch back to Oshawa again, because Lord knows we don't want to fight it with Snivy. At least not yet. Maybe in the next route with the zero upgrades that might be worth doing, but as of now it's just super slow. Because this, is, this whole last area is where I haven't done all the fights yet. In that version of the route. I shouldn't have, um, raised, um, what did I just do? I don't know how I lost the head. I must have been really reckless how I was taking damage there, I guess. That's surprising, I don't think I've ever lost that fight. That's, like, that never happens. Whatever, it's fine. I was just about to start talking, talking crap about how it's an easy fight because he literally sits up against the wall, but then I lost, so. I do that again. Ah, I missed that. Okay, 189. That's that's good. Not perfect, but good. Yeah, I don't know what I did that last time to lose. Other than just be way too reckless, I guess. I must have just missed him too many times or something. I don't know. I definitely did something wrong, but I'm not cognizant enough to know exactly what it was. Okay. So... We finally get through to him and start being able to figure out stuff, and then he decides we need to make a trade and go and help out um, to fix the bridge before we can do anything. Now, we can technically use glitches to skip to um, not have to go and do this side quest, but unfortunately it isn't actually faster because the Pokemon that guards the auto warehouse area after this... Um, It's like, it's, um, not Conkeld or Gurger, what's it called? Um, Golurk. He's invincible if you battle him early. He won't take any damage from any attacks you do. You can still fight him, but he won't have any text boxes, and he, it doesn't do any damage to him. So you can't get into the area because he's guarding the entrance that you can't get into <laughs> without beating him. Um, which is really dumb, but at the same time, I mean, I guess... Good on them for making their game not breakable. But I think after that fight, after you lose, it like freezes the game or something weird. But I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've messed around with that. But I definitely I tried it before, and I was like, oh, 
Well, that's sad. That's that. That's the reason there aren't more glitches in this run, because the devs have a lot of flags and stuff that um, make it so that even if you find a glitch and are able to get past an area when you wouldn't normally be able to, it doesn't matter because it just won't work. But now we have timber and cement, and we're using timber to carry the timber, and we'll carry the cement because we don't have a Pokemon named Cement. I don't know, I think this whole trip was just an excuse for Steph to stare at the sky one more time and look at the black hole from an um, area that's much more visible from. <laughs> but yeah, it's slowly getting bigger, but we gotta be careful. Honestly, to be fair to Tepic though, He's talking about how, how much of a scary cat he is or whatever. I'd be freaking out in that situation too if it was like real life, you know. Luckily, this is the one and only um, Driplin cutscene we can actually skip. <laughs> because we've already done that one. Anyway, time to go talk to Conkelder again. Then we get to show off the Rob Hop. So... Um, the Raw Hub is a trick that's going to come up after this, but essentially, we normally would use Pikachu's Thunderbolt to move some trains and some cutscenes and stuff. Instead of doing that, we use Snivy's Leaf Tornado to extend our jump and get across a gap to, between two trains. Um, which lets, lets, lets us not have to go through all that trouble. And it's just a bit of a cool um, little trick to save a bit of time. There's a much harder version of it in a in um, a later section, but the hardest part of this one is just making sure you're at the right angle and at the right speed, because if you don't have the right momentum, then Snivy won't clear the jump, and if you're at the wrong angle, it'll sometimes like hit a wall instead of hitting um, the platform you're supposed to land on, and you'll lose anyway. But yeah, this area is really free because you just get you're, the story friends actually are friends in this area, so you can get friended with Conkeldor and Gurger, um, as well as like other Pokemon in the area, which make the portal really easy, even if you aren't trying to get any friends. But yeah, so now that we're befriending Conkeldor and Gurger, we get the. I for this cutscene, we get to do the Rob Hop. But yeah. Because we would be able to clip into a train and get across the area before even any of this other stuff happened, but fortunately, the devs made it so you couldn't do that. But they didn't stop this. Even we're like, oh, let's put a hole here. It said you can shake the Wiimote for a very long time and it'll extend your jump enough to where you can make it. That was actually a pretty quick one. They're normally not that quick. Um, just because I'm not usually as good at lining up that camera angle there quite so quickly, but that worked pretty well. So Snivy's actually used for this fight, um, just because it good tight matchups and all. That being said, I did that a bit wrong, but. Still 192. It's supposed to be 194, but I missed the initial leaf tornado. That's okay. Either way, we're going to a friend Golurk and get into the unaware. And now he's about to push a train through the door because that's the best way to open a door, you know? Honestly, I think it's more of a flex than anything. If anything, that train's gonna be blocking the door. <laughs> but anyway, time to go in on a warehouse. So, if you're familiar with this game at all, um, then you'll know why this area is hard. But essentially, 
it's a set of balance beams and if you're playing this game normally with the controls the way they are on a d-pad it's very hard to run across them very fast casually i ended up having to switching to the slow tepig just so that i would have a slow enough pokemon that could run across it without having trouble but of course in a speed run, you have to go quickly, so instead you have to run across all those balance beams with Snivy and not fall off, because if you fall off, you have to climb all the way back up. <laughs> so, good luck, and also don't bunk into Electivire there, because he'll force you to fight him if you bunk into him. Which I know from experience. Weirdly, I also have trouble hitting these levers sometimes. It shouldn't be hard, but it just is sometimes. Yeah, it can be really easy to accidentally walk off and have to, um, like that, um, and have to redo the whole, um, thing. So this gap here is also really annoying, because you have to, like, it's a small jump, but it's really easy to accidentally mess it up and fall the way and have to move all the way back and just feel regret the entire time because your run's probably dead at that point. I lost many of good pace run to falling over on that spot. Um, I don't know why I break there. So we go all the way over here. Find the escaping um, gears from the elevator. Which, whoever built this elevator is a real jerk, I gotta say. Like, imagine you're in a Pokemon world and, like, we're like, we're we gonna build this door that doesn't need to be in front of the elevator. That we have to use three Pokemon to unlock. And, you know, they're there against their will. They clearly don't like it based on what their, their text boxes say if you read them over here while I go and talk to them. But uh, luckily, this is the last time they're gonna have to open the door. But it was only once, so like, whatever, I guess. You wanna be free Pokemon, and not stuck in this box. Luckily, this one specific beam has, like, invisible walls there. Which prevents a potentially really cool looking trick from happening. Unfortunately, but also at the same time, um, makes it a lot easier to navigate there without accidentally falling off. Clang. And now we got Clang, and then we have to run all the way back around to go back up. Yeah, these balance beams are um, not to be messed with. You get in, you get out. Uh, the, this specific jump right there, the second time you do it, that that's when it's the worst. You, you get confident and then you mess it up. Okay, that went pretty well, actually. What's up, Potion Bagel? Um, but yeah. So, now that we've finally bring them back, they're opening this, um, door, which, based on how it sounds, based on, like, the noises, I definitely get why they don't want to go back in there. But, luckily, they're not going to have to if the door just stays open, which it will. And see, we get three more free friends here. This game just, ha this section just hands them out like candy. So this portal is going to be, like, very quick. Like, I think it, it's very, um, even for, like, players that aren't the best with shaking stuff, I don't think this section is usually that much of an issue. You might need, like, one extra friend if you're, like, um, if you, if you struggle a bit in general, but I don't think most people end up needing extra friends here.
And now it's time for... Rio Nicholas. And here it's revealed that Rio Nicholas was the one who designed all the poster portals and stuff. Luckily, all we have to do to um, save it is to go into the lab, which is another one of those um, house swap mini games. And I don't remember there being this much text here. Geez. Um, getting the side drawn coal hider. The side drawn coal hider. You have. They're both right here. <laughs> Luckily, I think a lot of Pokemon um, that are like in the way, you can just kind of bonk into because they have a bunch of different like weights, which depend determine whether or not Snivy and Tepig and Oshawa can bonk into them and everything. Okay, this is the last one of the Pal Swap mini games in the in this run, and it's has a bunch of like small things that are pretty neat to look at, but they aren't necessarily individually that that impressive. Um. Just like stuff I've seen in other areas, but expanded upon. A lot of Snivy. Still no Pikachu. We can cut past this um, platform by doing another carefully timed Leaf Tornado. To give ourselves that extra bit of height. And then Tepig will be used for this one block. And then we go back to um, Snivy. And I fell. Okay, it's probably the best way of doing that, Jeff, but it's okay. So we run around, and... Epic. So... We... Tepig is very intentionally the only Pokemon that... It, it's very good that Tepig has a damage block there anyway. Because carrying, um... That, um... Object with anyone other than Tepig is actually very slow. Because all the other Pokemon walk really slowly when trying to grab um, those weights. Yeah, thanks for the raid. I like this one, them falling and Snivy's holding it up. It's always weird seeing like a lot of these on widescreen because I'm used to um, 4x3. Um, a good thing about having widescreen though is that you can see Pokemon that are on the margins you normally wouldn't be able to see in 4x3. Um, which helps for stuff like getting Whimsicott. Okay, ready to give it a try. So yeah, this portal shouldn't be an issue at all. Yeah, we have so many friends here. So, coming up is, um, the last attraction, um, which, if you notice, like I've said before, um, the attractions are kind of based off of the different, um, well, each section has a Pokemon that's best at it, right? And, you know, Oshawott's best at Seasong Beach and everything. 
but not until the last attraction of the game is that we get the one where Pikachu's actually the best at. Because it's tech area, so it's like electric types. Which, it took me embarrassingly long to realize that, <laughs> honestly. I was always just so confused why Pikachu just had insane amounts of points you can get on this minigame compared to everyone else. Like, some of the other minigames, it's like, oh yeah, more leeway in timing your um, dance swings or whatever. But it's actually ridiculous how much of an advantage Pikachu has on this minigame in terms of points. Because you just... Basically, you normally get a bunch of... A... Different gem colors. Um... I give you different amounts of points in this minigame. But... Instead of, um... A bunch of different gem colors... We just get one, and it's the best one. <laughs> That being said, there was one run I did, which was my first attempt at doing a Japanese run, um, that completely backfired and I felt so awkward. I lost this minigame, which is, you know, the minigame I'm sitting here talking about being really easy, because I completely forgot how the game controls and tried to use it like a Wii Remote pointer or whatever instead of holding the Wii Remote sideways. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? I was so dumbfounded. The thing I like about this minigame is looking at all the different um, Pokemon animations and stuff they put into it. Um, more than anything else. Um, if you've played Kingdom Hearts, this a lot. Of, um, someone made the comparison that this is kind of like um, the gummy missions in that game. Where you kind of just fly around and um, doing stuff in space or whatever. Yeah. Even though there's no timer on this mini game, it is just an auto scroller. I, w I wouldn't like check and compare it all the times for all the Pokemon and everything, and it just is. Which is unfortunate, you know. I wish there was some like interesting chat or something I could tell you about that. But like you see some of these like gems that are not yellow here at the end. You have like 30 points instead of 30 or 20 or whatever. That's how like much of an advantage Pikachu has. Like getting a hundred points per gem instead of like 20 and 30, and then occasionally a hundred is a big difference. It just makes Pikachu completely busted compared to all the other Pokemon in this section. But it also really doesn't matter because this minigame is really easy anyway. So now we get to go into a very hard section of the game that's called the tower, and then that's followed up by the sigil of fight, which isn't as bad, um, but you know it still has some level of strategy in it. Um, but this tower we do with Snivy, um, and it's like a mixture of that Haxorus thing that we um, did before with like the running up to it before the, its battle, and the um, fights we did. Um, I mean, in the movement Rob Hop we did to jump over that gap in the earlier section, except this last jump will be way harder to do because, um, if you pay attention to this cutscene, you see the last Pokemon here is Dredagon. Snivy cannot deal with Dredagon, but neither can like all the other Pokemon except for Pikachu. But Pikachu can't deal with Seismitoad. So no matter who you pick, it's going to take forever, and all this movement means it's almost definitely worth picking Snivy in almost every situation. Unless you just absolutely can't do the trick. But you have to run along a specific path, and you can gain and lose a lot of time based on the mistakes you make here. Running between those Amoongus is really hard, by the way. <laughs> A lot of the time, it's just, I feel like it's random, almost. So this rock hop's gonna be really hard, right at the end here. And it's basically gonna be used to skip the entire Dredagon fight, which is normally mandatory.
Oh, I made it without doing Leaf Storm, that's great. Yeah, that, that's a big jump you have to make there, and it's very easy to accidentally fall too much and miss and have to fall all the way back down. And it's... It's not easy, it might... It, it takes a lot of practice to get that specific one down, but... You know, once you get it, um, you get it, but it can be really easy to make a tiny mistake and just fall. And that wastes a bunch of time. Okay, but now the Pikachu part of this. Which isn't as hard, but still, yeah. Uh, I actually did that in kind of a slow way there. Yeah, a 270 it's okay. You want to get like a 280 something usually, but it's not always easy. Um, because the invincibility frames can sometimes mess up your fight plan. But Sigilyph is lost, so... You get to hit the final wish bell. We gotta switch back to Snivy because Pikachu's slow. Yeah, this is probably good pace if we can keep it up for the rest for the last two seg segments of the run because this is plus four about i think plus four minutes i mean um so it'd be a pretty good marathon time i think so now that we've gotten all of the um, bells rung and all of the people defeated, the Wish Park is coming together. It's like a Lego set. <laughs> or like connects or something. And now we get to go to the final boss, question mark? So the entrance is opening. And there it is. The big glowing thing in the middle. Um, okay, I didn't I know how I pressed left there, but anyway, um Oh no. Not these three. But they aren't stopping me. They're just saying, hey, you might not like what's coming up. But I don't care. She's talking nonsense. That being said, I might not like what's coming up because, unfortunately... This next fight, for some reason, I'm... I tend to screw it up for some reason. I don't really know why. It's not that hard, I don't think. Hiplup's the boss?
Here, I'll play forever and ever. Oh. I know that did waste time, but I don't care. Okay. So we fight a couple up here. Oh, I was getting too close. My bad. Yeah, that wasn't that bad. This was a 192. You can get up to a 194 there. Um, you know, just Leaf Tornado and then Leaf Storm, Leaf Storm. Um, and you, you can't Leaf Tornado again or anything like that, because unfortunately the damage doesn't add up unless you specifically use the Charge Attack twice and then Leaf, tor leaf Tornado once. Um, but for some reason it's really easy to miss that leaf, the first Leaf Storm, if you're not careful. But now is actually the time for the final, final boss, I think, maybe, perhaps, possibly. Well, that's unfortunate. Awesome. Um, yeah. That's not usually the angle I talk from that, but I mean, it works. Pik Pikachu just felt really floaty there for, for a second. <laughs> yeah, there's sun in your face. It's green. Forever alone. Sad face. Yeah, the world sad as well. I'll give Pikachu a moment of silence for the cutscene. <laughs> Pikachu. What have I done? This can't be. Oh, it's old Oshawa. Wait, no, that's not right. But yay! And you see Zekrom and Urshwam in the back. So yeah. We've been saved from our depression. By the power of friendship. And now we get to do the amnesia, fix the amnesia cliche.
remind them of who they once were. Goodbye, Piplup. You were in the story. Okay, so we can't grip him back. We have to run all the way back manually, unfortunately. Um, that's the one argument if you were going to say, why don't we upgrade Pikachu's dash, would be because of this specific section of the game. Because unfortunately, we do just have to run all the way back and forth. <laughs> because this is an intentional choice on the dev's part. If you talk to Driplim, it'll say, oh, the wind's weird, we can't do this flying right now or whatever. Which, you know, is good and all, I guess. But, um... Unfortunately, um, that means it's much slower for us. And you know, this is where I really wish there was a Pika clip that we clipped to the floor and um, the bottom of Seasong Beach to go back to that entrance. But I haven't found anything yet. If anyone sees anything and let me know, I'd be really interested. Okay, but we get to do Oshawott. And Oshawott's battle is very similar to the first battle, but it's very different in that he's on the bridge, which you wouldn't think makes a big difference, but he completely screw up the way the fight works. Okay, well, I screwed it up. That was not the game's fault. That was just my fault. But, I mean, 180, it's okay, I guess. Um, not really, but... Yeah, the thing about the bridge is that um, if you try to use Thunderbolt on the bridge like you normally do, um, it doesn't actually work. We've got Oshawott back, but um, for some reason the angle of the bridge means that the um, like end lag from after you finish using Thunderbolt is much longer. So Pikachu just takes forever to be able to actually go and charge back at Oshawott to do the next attack, so it just makes it way slower and not at all effective, because you'll get hit by the time you get back to where Oshawa is. Um... But... Like, the fight itself, like, the damage amounts and everything are the same. Um... Which is like, I don't know exactly if they were aiming for these to be harder, or just the same as they were the first time you did it. But... It's definitely, um... Not consistent that it's harder, or even different. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, like I said, we can't drift limb over to um, Arbor area, so we gotta go run all the way to... Um, all the way there manually, you know. So it'll take a bit. If you ran that here, I don't care. Uh, probably because it'll just be a bunch of nothing for a bit. Um, but... Yeah. We have to, um, basically just traverse the entire layout of the area again, um, to get back to the stump, because that's where Snivy's at. And at least once we're at Snivy, we'll have our fast movement speed back, so getting to Tepic won't be as bad. But, so, the annoying thing about the whole, oh, the drift limb doesn't work right now thing, to me, though, is that once you're done getting all the Pokemon, then you talk to drift limb, and it's like, Oh, we understand the wind now, I think, so we can fly. And it'll let you use it. There's no reason it should. The game's just like, yeah, we're, we're gonna make up some excuse so you can use it now. It's like, I couldn't have done this before. You will, I really had to run all the way here. <laughs> like I said before, earlier, do, do not run into Mankey here. If you do, you'll get forced into a fight that's like 30 seconds long. And just waste a bunch of time. I learned that the hard way. I was on a really good PB pace um, and lost a run to that. But, um, yeah. Luckily, we're almost there now. It's still not better to switch to Oshawa and go across this pond. Um, because the time you, you spend switching is more than the time you spend running around. 
which doesn't seem like it's the case to me, but whenever you actually look at it, it is. So it's like, it's always weird in my head. But we will get to do another Pika clip. Um, you know, that trick I mentioned twice and then didn't get to do anymore. It's because there's just not a ton of places to do it in any percent, unfortunately, that are useful. Um, but there are some. Um, but first, we get to do the Snivy chase again. Why did I say no? And this time it'll be easier, and I know for a fact it'll be easier because it's the exact same chase as the first time, except we have Shake Sprint this time, which is that thing that I said you were supposed to get before. They, they made no effort to change the specific chase, and I don't really know why. But yeah, see that doesn't, the, the mistake I made earlier doesn't normally happen, it just occasionally happens. But, either way, um, Snivy snapped out of the Amnesia, so now we can have good movement speed. But, before we even take advantage of that, we are going to switch to Snivy, but to do a Pika clip. So, we can't get up to the sledge normally, we can get up to it here. A bit of a slow peak clip, unfortunately, but it's better if you get it quickly. But you know, obviously, you can't always get it perfectly. Wait, switch, switch, Snivy. What am I doing? <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Proceed back to him away. So now we get to run and go back and get Tepig. Um. So I think that, generally speaking, um. Well, even though Pika Clip isn't super useful in general, it's still interesting to have because otherwise there's not really a ton of glitches in this game. It's really just that one glitch. And until very recently, there wasn't any glitches in Poke Park 1 either. Until randomly I was just doing a run and I accidentally figured out that you can essentially do something similar to that clip, Pika Clip in Poke Park 1. But instead of switching Pokemon, you have to be in the place you need to be at, and then start a minigame, and then after the minigame, it down warps you, which means it's much harder to do. But it's interesting that both games have kind of the same one glitch you have com combined between them, and they're not that useful for either of the speedruns. Oshawott's like, rat or cowboy, cowgirl, whatever, I don't know. Bucking Bronco, all that. Um, okay, so. Now we get to go do Tepig, and Tepig is actually harder than the first time. It's not by a lot, but it definitely is harder. So for a fact it's harder because the strategy that I usually that I used the first time does not work the second time. Well, I didn't use the strategy the first time right though, so it doesn't really matter that much, but Yeah. Instead of trying to do what I did last time, I just need to go and hit him immediately. And just do that. Because you just want to get him out of his health as soon as possible, and you can't get him in the one invincibility frame cycle. So I have to go for two. The second best thing. Um, but now that we have all of our pals, we can use Driplum again. Which means we can go to Windmill Way. Um, and get our, um, there was Diglett, by the way, people who wanted to see Diglett. Um, yeah, we can go to Windmill Way, back where we just were, we go in that portal. And the reason we choose that portal is because the drip limb and the poster are really close together. Um, the only downside is that you can bonk into Mankey. If you're really unlucky. 
to lose you, like, like I said, 30 seconds. Okay. And luckily, this portal isn't as hard the second time. I do have to do the shaking still, but it's not as hard because Zoroark and Zorua are now my friend. Um, unlike last time where we just sort of knew they existed, um, but didn't really, we weren't technically friends. I disc crashed. What the heck? This is never... Man. What should I do? Okay, I have time. I have a backup save I can switch to. I just gotta... I did not expect that to happen. Um, wait. Harvey and Soda get actually first before I do that. That's... I have a backup save I can switch to, but I actually, I reinserted it, it fixed it, I think. Maybe. Did it fix it? Let's go. I fixed it. <laughs> I just took out the disc and put it back in, it worked. Okay. I was hoping it doesn't mess up again. That would have been really sad. Um, okay. What I was gonna do is I was gonna switch to a practice save, because I have some in a file on my computer and I have enough time to do that, I think. Luckily, I didn't need to. You can skip that cutscene now. Um. <laughs> Don't worry, it's fine. Okay, so. Now we're coming up on the actual, actual end. I was actually not supposed to go, I was supposed to go to the right side here, but I was kind of distracted in my thoughts. Um. But yeah. Now that that scares over, um. Okay. So, we're on sub-240 pace, as long as I do Darkrai right. The second phase of Darkrai, I don't think is going to be an issue. The first phase of Darkrai is hard. Like, one of the hardest parts of the run. Um, if you screw it up, it can teleport around and get to the point where it kills you. Especially with one Oshawott upgrade, so I gotta be really careful. Um, so, I'm trying to focus. There's gonna be a lot of dash combo cancels and razor shells immediately after to knock him into his knockback. You can get him into like a loop, but you have to maintain that loop the whole time with the weird camera angles and everything and the controls. Um, if you maintain it and it works perfectly, it's great. You can get a really good time on the fight. If you don't do it perfectly, it can be miserable. I was not supposed to use that attack there. Okay, let me focus, because I don't know what to do here exactly. Okay, I fixed that, I think. No, maybe I didn't fix it. Okay, I just gotta kind of wait for him to show back up. This is unfortunately slow, but as long as I'm careful not to let him just mess me up, I should be fine. Okay, yeah. Slow, but I got him. Yeah. But like I was saying, it it's not... Um, if you maintain the loop perfectly, it works perfectly fine, it's great. It doesn't always work that way. The second part of the fight is much more forgiving. He stays in place, essentially, and uses a bunch of attacks at you, like a... You know, a mega boss or whatever, you can cut the... See here. But luckily, the dash combo cancel thing, along with some, a couple dodges, can really just um, outpace him.
Okay, 3D. That that part of the fight was perfect, at least. Um. Okay, so we have a bit of cutscenes to go, but um, for the person doing the timer, um, time ends whenever Pikachu's head bonks on the wish bell. Which will probably be in like two or three minutes. Um, but it's gonna be a lot of cutscenes and stuff. They should be a sub 240, which would be nice. At least I think it is. Uh, I don't. That dark path is a bit slow, but. Even with that, like, disc thing, I don't think I'd see where I wasted that much time there. Yeah, um, I guess while this stuff's going on, since someone posted the shout-out thing in the chat anyway, um, I, um, yeah, I have a YouTube channel that's streamed regularly, Poke Park 1 and 2 on Twitch, um, for speedrunning both those games. Um, probably after this, I'm going to be starting to try and grind out more Park 1, because I was getting close to record. I got a third place time the other day, and I have time save I know I can get. So I'm kind of wanting to get better times in that game. And then I'll probably go back to part two and work on the zero upgrade route for Oshawa. Um, for any percent in that game. Um, but I'd also like to shout out some of the people in the community um, for the park discord. Um, Poom and Cinder. Um, both really good at moderating and, you know, just in general interacting and being good people in the community, especially for park one. Um, pre... Um, is really good for his all friends in part two, especially. Um, Firework Spinner, um, active, and just a bunch of other people, really, just everyone in the community, honestly, um, that just regularly chats in the Discord or shows up to streams or anything like that. Um, you know, just I really want to shout out all of them. It's like so many people that are just really nice people. Um, And, you know, I'm glad to be able to run this route, because I know, um... I know this route specifically hadn't been ran before in, like, a marathon, because it's a route that really... Only me and a few other people have really done, because it's really bad on your arm. Um, but I'm glad I got to show it off. Um... So, yeah, we get to run up here, and then once we hit the wish bell at the top, is whenever the time will be called. That, that disc scare was really funny, but also really terrifying. Okay, so that's time. So that's a 238.30 something. On my screen, I have like a live split that's up separately. I don't have like the stream thing up because it was messing up on my mind. Um, but I do have the chat up. Um, but yeah, just you know, shout outs to um, Zorico who shouted out my run when he was doing Rumble Blast earlier. Um, <laughs> I think it was Rumble Blast. Um, it was a Rumble game, I know that. Um, and shout outs to Shady Nico who um, shows up to a lot of my streams. Um, Mr. Main Guy and other people, you know, just, you know, shout out to everyone in this marathon, you know, tech people, everyone, um, just for showing up and making it a good event every year. Um, but yeah, with that, I guess the final cutscenes and stuff playing out, um, but that's about it, I think, just watching the world fall apart and then Probably, I know. This ending caught me off guard when I first watched it when I played the game. I was like, oh, I didn't expect it to actually, like, even just to falsely have Oshawa just, like, go into the vortex like that. It's like, oh.
Yeah. Uh, this game has a lot to offer, and I think it's a you know fun speed run. Um, so I'm glad I got to show it off. So I think there's going to be a break after my run, but uh, um, I hope you guys all um, tune in for the last day. Um, I know I personally am going to be working, but <laughs> yeah, Dark Rise sacrificed himself. Um, yeah. Nowrish, yeah. So, that's about all I have to say. Thanks.